I'm back with another video today we have how blue lock teaches you about the ego you lack it's on both screens without further ado let's get straight into the video I never finished the blue lock either I was close <laughs> Egoist, a person who is self-centered and focused primarily on their own needs and desires. While it is generally understood that having self-confidence is important in sports, the specific emphasis on being an egoist is a central theme in Blue Lock that stands out when watching the show. But what does it really mean to be one, and why does being an egoist specifically seem to matter so much? Let's set the stage. Blue Lock takes place in a post-World Cup Japan, after the country's defeat in 2018. Ego Jimpachi, the coach and essential game master of Blue Lock, believes that the root of Japan's defeat in the World Cup was a lack of strong individual scoring ability, which he attributes to the country's strong cultural emphasis on filling one's assigned role and working as a cohesive unit. Jimpachi believes that in order to win the World Cup, Japan will need a revolutionary scorer who possesses a strong sense of individuality and the ability to go beyond their assigned role on the field. According to Jimpachi, soccer is a sport that requires more more than just following orders and fulfilling your assigned role. This is why he says originally soccer was a sport with 11 strikers, because every individual player's goal should be to do what they can to score, and thus the player taking the shot should be the player most capable of it. As the show puts it, to turn zero into one, a single player has to define themselves as the striker. An ego is required to decide for yourself that you will be the striker, and the other players will naturally evolve around the striker taking up the other positions on the field to support the striker and score as many points as possible. The arrow isn't drawn, it makes the bow come to it. In the world of soccer, goalies, defenders and midfielders can be trained. But first class strikers appear where the game is most intense. That's because the ego required to be a top notch striker also attracts players to the highest level of competition. It's a never ending cycle of confidence, skill and determination that propels the best players to the top while crushing the players below them. The main character of a story is often the vessel through which the messages and themes are conveyed, and Isagi, the protagonist in Blue Lock, is no exception. Despite a first hand coming across as someone soft and maybe unconfident, Isagi perfectly embodies the idea that ego is a key factor in driving one's abilities. Isagi's character, personality, and abilities are all crafted to highlight the idea that ego is what propels a player's success in soccer. At the start of the show, Isagi is a bubble ready to burst. We see his internal desire to reach a higher level of competition. Despite his aspirations, he chooses to fulfill the team player stereotype by passing the ball instead of scoring himself, which in most sports anime would be rewarded. And while you'd assume this statistically is the better play, it is essentially shying away from the competition. Isagi distinctly says, I'm going to nationals, not we're going to nationals when he rushes down to goal. However, when faced with the first selection of Blue Lock, Isagi makes a conscious choice to prioritize his ego over his insecurities. He attacks players who are stronger than him, showing that he has a true desire to compete. Ryosuke Kira is the opposite of him. Being more talented and blasting through several defenders to score a goal in the same match, Isagi decided to pass. However, those defenders simply weren't as good as he is, but when he's in the first selection, he ridicules the exercise rather than considering it a exciting challenge. And when faced with opposition, he gave up despite having the physical and mental capabilities to succeed. Ryosuke's giving up has nothing to do with willpower, hard work, talent, or anything like that. It's simply a lack of a true ego which would have propelled him to dominate the selection with his talent, which is the ego that Isagi did have and that made him challenge not just someone better than him, but the best player in the room. This dichotomy is most easily displayed even before the start of Blue Lock. Being informed of Jimpachi's ideology and told that his competition will put their future soccer careers at risk with the goal of simply becoming the best, Ryosuke is the first person to reject this notion, while Isagi is the first to accept it. Isagi's weapon on the field is his spatial awareness, which allows him to have a comprehensive view of the field. Unlike other characters who have easily defined weapons and talents such as Bachira's dribbling, Shigeru's speed, or Kunigami's power shot, 
lot. Isagi's vision of the field allows him to control the game rather than dominate it directly. When used modestly, Isagi's spatial awareness makes him a solid defender or a great assist, but when used egotistically, it allows him to control the game completely, circumvent his opponent's strengths and manipulate the game to score goals for himself. Put together, Isagi is a genius of adaptability. He doesn't just seek out the greatest competition, and he doesn't just have a great vision of the game. He's willing to use these traits to break himself down and repair himself over and over again, using not just his own strengths, but the things he's learned over the course of a game to see, adapt to, and overcome these challenges. I think another character that's a great vessel for the mentality of Blue Lock is Chigiri. While Chigiri had a great weapon of his own, being his speed, after an injury he becomes scared of losing what he has left. While this is honestly a perfectly normal way to feel, it does kneecap any chance of him developing a future in soccer, which he is painfully aware of. However, Chigiri's interaction with Isagi serves as a wake-up call and sparks the resurgence of his lost ego. Chigiri realizes that his fears have been holding him back and preventing him from reaching his full potential. Ego. I like that right there. A lot of us as a collective, the populace, we have this on us. It can be something that dwindle your light. It can be something that slap you. It ain't got to be a physical slap, but slap you. Oh, stop daydreaming. Stop being an innovative free thinker. Stop being creative. This is real life. You got to pay bills, etc. But the first lock is this box we confined to with four walls. It's the it's reason why it's shaped like a square. That's one box we're trapped in as a collective. There's always been exceptions to the rules and people on the outskirts. Like me, I'm one of them. But I am in one of the boxes. The other two boxes, I'm not. But the other two boxes is is your mind and the box symbolize the same chain like a box and then chains around it metaphorically speaking it's like your mind you can't think outside the circumferences of what you're subjected to like you can't you can't get on the other side of the map the outskirts i don't know if that was a good way to put it for real but and the third box is like your heart, your spirit, your actual power and essence. You identify as your name. Your name is important. You will be sculpted and molded around your name. It's the reason why you're everything that pertains to your name. You look like it. And your name is a word. And the word, the smaller building blocks to that word is letters. And every letter converts into a number. Every letter is a number originally before anything. We're in the matrix. It's ran off of numbers. So... You identify as this name that they gave you free of charge at, of, at birth. And they gave you a race and a religion. False sense of identity. And you see everybody else walking in a straight line. You feel like, okay, it's only me and most of them walking that way. I feel like all of them, they know what they're doing because it's more of them than me. Let me follow suit and do the same. When you really look at things for what it is, them people doing what they're trained to do, they don't really know what they're doing. But yeah, the box is the same thing metaphorically with these chains. Like you got a chain, what we in, these four walls. And then your mind. That's why a lot of people can't do things or they feel like things is outside the realm of possibility. And you limit it to your mind. They do say everything is possible. You cannot not think of anything that isn't possible. Or that thought you have grabbed from the infinite water source, what you call God, was here before you thought of it. And it's a reason you thought of it. But where does a thought go when it's forgotten? But I like this. He was scared that he can hurt his leg again. Uh, this injury can put it into him or whatever. And he decided to break that mold and not let that define him. You just break that chain off his his leg and but it's it's multiple contributors that that I guess push us against where we got our back against the wall. It could be the doctor, his family members, his ones he hold most near and dear that tell him, Oh, don't do that. Be careful. You know this can happen, this can happen if you and he decided to say F that and just take his his life into his own hands.
it's not even knowing what you're supposed to be doing most of the time. It's like it's a difference between knowing and walking the path. So he decided for himself that, well, like the imagery and the metaphors and how I even interpret things, I can interpret in multiple ways. But yeah, this is a really dope anime. I would suggest you watch it. It's a lot you can learn from it. The consensus, the populace, the mass majority. It seemed like they deem anime to be some weird, nerdy, corny shit. I'm here to tell you. I mean, I may be nerdy a little bit, but at the end of the day, I stand firmly with the 42 ideals of my op. I ain't never been no lame. I know me and I'll whoop your ass. So you can't call me lame. I'm leading the pack. I'm me. I'm be yourself. And the most creative people is in the realms of they and they into everything. But it's a lot of creativity that come from anime, and there's so much you can learn. It's not just a cartoon and animation. Um, yeah, I, I really like this. Let's continue though. Surgeons of his lost ego, Chigori realizes that his fears have been holding him back and preventing him from reaching his full potential. Ego, in this case, is not just a sense of self-importance, but a driving force that fuels his ambitions and desires. It's Garfield is the number one movie in the world. Now that's amazing! I can't... It's not just a matter of bravery or willpower, but the burning desire of his ego that allows him to rip himself free of the shackles that tied him down. To explain why it's specifically ego and not willpower or bravery that allows Chigori to do this, his desire isn't to help his team win or to enjoy the feeling of the wind flowing past him or something like that. It's the satisfaction he feels outspeeding others and leaving them biting his dust, which is more important to him than his knee, his reputation, or even his entire soccer career. The ego that drives him to literally stake everything he has on a single moment is the same ego that proudly lets him proclaim his desire to be the world's greatest striker. All of this is good and well, however, in a competition specifically designed to grow players alongside their ego, egos will clash. And while there are many noteworthy characters in the series, the And a lot of people may be like, again, it'd be a love for your friends or whatever, like, oh, don't do that again. You see what happened last time. At the end, that's in your conscious and your subconscious as well. And you look at it like, hell, that is realistic. If it happened once, it can happen again. If it happened again, it's over with. Your belief in yourself, your ability, your effort, well, your belief in yourself can determine. It can create that mountain or move that mountain. The only person that can get in their own way is you. So it's like you can decide, but it's a... It can be a weird or tricky thing sometimes because a lot of people psych themselves into and they really know they don't believe in whatever they spewing like it's like you got to really dial in somehow and you need to be aligned like with your, your chakras your you can't self-sabotage your inner your internal dialogue you have to all be on the same accord and alignment with this to actualize manifest and materialize this this thing you want for yourself Cause I feel like most of us, we just say it, but what really lingers in our subconscious is, man, get real, get realistic. This is not it. You can't. And what give others confidence is they got to see someone else do it first. But you can be the first to do it. You're really not the first to do it, but you can. Cause everything that's going to happen, happen. It's all happening now. Tomorrow is still in the now. Yesterday is still in the now. The past, present, and future is all happen simultaneously. But I get that though. A lot of us feel like we got to see someone do it. Then they to give us that extra 25% boost up. Well, like, nah, you can be the first to see you do it. And then they can see and you can lead the pack and move forward. And, but yeah, we got so many boxes and the box is the same thing is symbolic for the chains the constraints the restrictions on you the limiters on you we got limiters on us because what we really confined to and at the end our mind something just seem impossible or fake due to what we program with we all we know is the installation of programming we don't know about the things that's on the outskirts because we haven't been on the outskirts so it's sound outlandish and absurd and then our actual power, our essence, we give it to some external source. 
you need to give the power to yourself and for once that's weak around you at whatever particular time and moment then lend them that energy it can be created or destroyed and you will receive it back tenfold so that's what i will use my force for self and to ones around me in need if i can extend my arm and help but that's what they need to teach in school if i was to create my own school it wouldn't be called school because words are important you will be sculpted around your name and it has a vibration that has a meaning and a resonance with it and that means skull laying the etymology that's like the whole back of the train a pet i don't want nothing holding me back and i ain't no pet so i would start from things like attitude make sure your attitude is gra uh, gratitude your personality use a person so use a percentage of sun condensed sunlight so your personality becomes your personal reality we will start there we'll get into your emotions and how to control things and how you should and right after that we'll pretty much be into um all your life skills to where you self-sufficient to where you can do it all on your own if necessary and but even before that though will be what you ingest because you are what you eat you are what you see and think about and hear so make sure you doing the right thing and i wouldn't say it's about balance because balance what if somebody want to be a saint half of the time and the other half of the time they want to be satan that doesn't i come to the realization of that that you don't want balance you don't want to balance that you want you want to have the scale tilted to what's to what's more in your favor so a lot of us think we supposed to be balanced because we hear it all the time but no let's say this is good and this is your advice it's bad you want to have so weighing down would be oh yeah so oh, you can't even see my hands down but um it's like we got balance right so you want your good, what's in your benefit to be up here and you want your vices to be down here because we still like what we like or whatever. And rather you have a regimen to, um, you want to eat better, eat according to your genetics, but you still have your vices, you like what you like. So I would say earn it. How you earn it is working out. How you earn it is by detoxing and doing all that. Then you can have your cheat meal, start over, detox it, and then repeat until you get closer to that threshold of being able to abandon all the things that isn't no good for you all together that's going to come with i guess time so it's not about balance it's about tilting the scales to what's more in your favor because a lot of us we I always hear balance 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 like what if i want to kill half of the time and the other half of the time like i know that's kind of extreme but still or what if i want to smoke half of the time and the other half of the time i want to like no it's about tilting the scale on what leans more in your favor so try to have that that 70 30 and try to eventually get that up to 90 10 and then so on and so forth because the better you control with that the duality of things as well it's like wouldn't that be the closer you get to obtaining christ conscious or passage to the realms of enlightenment to infinite it's like just infinity and where it's truly no restraints or limiters on you and yeah let's continue though most intriguing is itoshi rin who holds the coveted number one ranking in the competition while rin is absent for the beginning of the story the fact all characters are ranked numerically leaves the audience interested in finding out who number one is we are introduced to a bunch of incredibly talented prodigies, each with their own unique ego and skill set. But from the start, we know that whoever carried the number one on their shoulder must be better than these players. Jimpachi's biased ranking, which is heavily influenced by ego, would place one of the most egotistical players at the top. And when Rin is finally revealed, the audience is left with a sense of subdued anticipation. We know that he is the best, but we don't know by how much. 
Isagi, who has an unwavering ego and a strong sense for competition, would obviously want to challenge Rin, knowing that the third selection will separate the players who stand at the peak from those who stand at the summit. During the match between Isagi and Rin's teams, we introduced the three new mindset from Rin and his teammates. Tokumitsu's self-image is so low that it forces a sense of desperation in his play that goes beyond anything we've seen up until now. Aryu is almost the total opposite of Tokimitsu. He cares heavily about the spotlight and wants to stand out more than any other player. And then there's Ring and we really get to see why he's considered the greatest player in the competition. For Rin, the stakes of losing are greater than for anyone else. He's not obsessed with winning, he's obsessed with not losing. While other players stake their dreams, reputations, and careers on these games, for Rin, losing is equivalent to death. His ego makes him play at a level of confidence and utmost authority unmatched by anyone else in the competition. Unfortunately, this match doesn't go very well for Isagi. Despite him and his team's best efforts, they're unable to overcome the talent and ego of Rin and his team. Icarus flew too close to the sun too, which shows the importance of not only understanding your own abilities, but being able to perceive yourself in comparison to someone else. But, in the world of competitive sports, it is an inevitability that even the greatest players will face defeat at some point in their careers. The true test of character lies in how one deals with that loss. This is I got so frustrated with ads on YouTube, I was watching more commercials than content. Pro this is where Blue Lock's philosophy stands out even more. While many other shonen and storytelling genres focus on the recovery from defeat, Blue Lock emphasizes the value of despair and the possibilities it opens up. Jipachi believes that individuals who suffer defeat but have an unyielding, never give up mentality are blinded to a reality that is constantly moving away from them. Instead, it's the players who experience the strongest sense of despair and disillusionment after a loss that are most likely to find new opportunities for growth and evolution. As we've seen already, a player's ego is a crucial part of their identity and their motivation. However, when that ego is shattered by defeat, it can be a deeply painful and destabilizing experience. Only the- And delusionment is necessary. It's very necessary for you to, to break the construct how far you done seen the people you once looked up to or still look up to took it into what's realistic. Element 115 is a real thing. It's very real, realistic, but you don't understand it. You don't get it, but it, it is what it is. It's here. It's real. So it's like you got to break past that tempered glass of realistic and however far someone had took it. So if you're in basketball, if you see Michael Jordan and Kobe and LeBron, that's, I guess, the top of the pyramid. That's what you're saying they took. You probably feel like you can't go that much higher and you will be thrilled and honored to even join them on the pyramid. But no, it can be broke past. After all, things are supposed to get more amplified and better. So it's like your body is composed of over the following amount of atoms and uh, cells and all cells are selves and from your previous ancestors and you will become an ancestor someday in generations and generations that's more data more more data more storage more just mixing the melting pot or whatever and if you're not going backward and not not evoluting then you should be moving forward you should get more advanced we was once on a playstation one now we on playstation five it's supposed to get more advanced more intricate more um it's necessary but Some ways can make you look at that with a sour face. Like, we all know somebody that want to do something. You don't want to tell them that they cannot do it or whatever. But what they at is just, it's just very cringy or bad. Like, I know you say this is what you want to do, but you're terrible. Like, we all done seen and met someone like that. So it's like, you don't, but you still can always work towards your for yourself and and push past that and actually get somewhat decent then because we don't all start out great but because it's like i don't want to tell the wrong person that that delusion is necessary i don't want to tell the wrong because we all know someone that's like they're it's like this is what you want to do they so bad at it you would think it's something that they never will ever want to do it's like that so it's like but to the ones that got it and you know you got it 
you know you got it genuinely and honestly not the ones that can't think outside their own program and look from other perspectives with bird eyes view and see how you possibly being perceived not to them but to the ones that really got it and you know and then you get confirmation from others as well and delusionment is necessary to push past the boundaries of whatever is deemed realistic and the ones you once looked up to that's in the same field that you're working in however far they took it that to shoot past that gate things is supposed to get amplified it's supposed to get better like we pay for electricity when it's energy it literally can be grabbed from the air somehow we have Tesla coils, but they're not going to disclose of that because they want to keep you busy and keep you paying for something and control the resources or whatever. But it's going to come a point in time that cat is going to be out the bag and that energy is going to be infinite again, like how it, it already isn't. But you get what I mean? It's like we're supposed to learn more. We're supposed to get more advanced. We're supposed to get better. Um yeah, I really recommend you guys check out this anime. There's so much you can learn from it that you can take for and implement and add to yourself and use on an everyday basis in real life. Well, let's continue. Players with the strongest sense of self and the most resilient egos will be able to pick themselves up and move forward. The idea of embracing despair may seem counterintuitive, but it is an essential part of personal growth and development. In the world of Blue Lock, it is not enough to simply have a strong will and determination. One must have the courage to confront their weaknesses and embrace the despair that comes with it. Only then can they emerge as a better, stronger version of themselves. Isagi himself is no stranger to this kind of struggle. Throughout the series, he faces numerous setbacks and challenges, and each time he must claw his way out by relying on his ego. However, in order to overcome even greater challenges that could lie ahead of him, he may need to confront an even greater sense of despair and hopelessness. Only by surviving that clash with his own ego and learning from the experience. My apologies, but I gotta pause it. I've never, I've seen a few of the episodes and I really liked it. I don't know what made me not finish it. I need my new fire stick jailbroken. I don't care. Arrest me. You're not arresting me, but I'm in the trenches right now still currently. So I'm gonna get it the freeway. Somebody unlock, jailbreak my fire stick. That's why. Yeah, that's exactly why. So I ain't got nothing much on there. But I like this imagery because I, I speak on this in my videos. Only by surviving that clash with his own. You see these these um, puzzle pieces? I see it quite a few times in my videos, you guys. I say, okay, I grew up on so many things. There's so much things that's near and dear to me, to my heart and nostalgic to me and every piece is very important if you take away one of the cards let's say we got a deck of cards and you made a skyscraper with the cards you take away one card you got a good chance of that whole thing falling right so it's like if you take away one puzzle piece from me i'm no longer me i'm no longer as sharp as i am dope or cool as i am however you perceive me i'm no longer so that can be everything i grew up on i'm going to name random things that i rock with Okay, um, Pursuit of Happiness by Kid and Cut Kid Cuddy is one of my favorite songs of all time. Like when I hear that, I get encapsulated and it takes me back to a time where things weren't perfect, but it was things were a lot simpler. And it was mine. And I grew up on South Park. I grew up on Bruce Lee. I grew up on it's you, you get me. It's just in a lot of different realms of thing. One of my favorite games of all time is GTA San Andreas and Bully. So it's like these and some have a bigger puzzle piece on me, meaning it has a bigger impact. Like, Bruce Lee's would be like the size of an organ on me. You got like a big piece that would make me me. And if you take away that puzzle piece, I'm no longer me. And then some people got smaller pieces, which is still cool. It's either I take it for what it's worth or I take it, put my own spin to it, tailor make it to myself, then equip it. But yeah, I, this is crazy, the symbology with it, because I speak on this. Like, that's how I would verbalize it. Like, it's like I'm composed of over a million pieces and it's still a bunch of blank spots because I'm only such and such years old. And I'm not saying that because I forgot my birthday not that long ago for great reason. I don't believe in birthdays. You're only born one time. I don't want to manifest, materialize, and actualize and manifest everything that pertains to a birthday. So that's, but yeah, I'm still young. And so it's a lot of empty spaces that's like this that will be feel me just going forward and getting 
accustomed to new things that I take a liking to and I take it for what it is or I take it, put my own spin to it, then equip it. But that's what make me me like. That's crazy. I like how they did this. The imagery is immaculate. Like, Let's continue ego and learning from the experience can he hope to become the world's greatest striker anyways blue lock is a story about ego ambition and the pursuit of greatness in the world of soccer like it challenges traditional shonen tropes by focusing on the importance of ego and how it drives the characters to push themselves to their limits i think it's a pretty interesting take on the genre which is why i wanted to delve through it like this this style of video is very different from other things i've done so if you enjoyed the video at all showing it some love would be appreciated this was a really nice video hopefully you guys learned something I don't remember when I liked the video, but rising. Um, and it's like some people tell us that you need to drop the ego. Your false sense of identity is what's keeping you confined in these chains of this box I was speaking about earlier. But where's the paradox? It's like, I get that. Source is what you call God. It's the infinite waters. And so I'm going to grab a cup, diet, put some red 40 in it. <laughs> nah, but at the end, they put it aside and that will be you, your own individual experience. You're a percentage of sun person. And yeah, for all other people. So it's like you having your own temporary human experience. So it's like, it's like some people speak as if you sub completely supposed to like get rid of the ego but when it comes to being the, the best in whatever facet of the field you went it requires that or if it ain't ego it's still something that pertains to that that individuality that like how he was referring to the, the guy earlier that losing he wasn't obsessed with winning he was obsessed with not losing or something like that right so it's like he associate that with death, toil and turmoil. And I associate death to uh, why well, I used to like some people fear still uh, is to be forgotten. Like they just pass on and you forgotten. Don't nobody care. Don't, they don't bat out, whatever he and people associate that with different things when it comes to defeat. But yeah, for you to shoot forward, for you to Michael Jordan, for you to. It's going to take that individuality that no it don't matter what everybody else doing they doing their they playing a role it's like nah this isn't good enough someone need to take more risk you need consistent effort and then you will break past barriers and then your your efforts will be and it do start off with self you got to get yourself on a in alignment and then put the work in the practice so it's like once you get good enough like I like the um Stephen Curry thing. It's like he put the work in and he he did something within himself. Like he's so good at threes that growing up playing 2K that you can create a fake character. You cannot create a fake character that got better threes in him. You can put it to the highest three point and average. He's still gonna miss shots often too. So it's like he he did something that pretty much defies explanation. If you would have, if he would have grown up telling people what he was gonna do, people wouldn't believe it because it's it's in the realm of unrealistic for real to be that good. And it only could go further. So it's like it start off with him, his belief in it. Then people see him show all the time. They see his ethic. They see him show, and all the people that's in the crowd that watch him, even the people that's watching him on TV that couldn't be at the game for whatever reason. We all connected. So through the infinite waters, all that is getting right back to him. Are you watching him? You're paying him with your intention and your intent is set that you know he's going to make it. So he already know he's going to make it. He already got 98% behind him, which is himself. And then he got the rest of the populace behind him knowing he's going to make most of his shots. That's what make him much more powerful is the attention you pay him and the intent set behind it of you knowing that he's going to come through. That's a real thing. I see that. That ain't of the matter of no philosophers or no wise gurus. I see it. I see it. I see that to be what it is. You put the self-work in and already broke them barriers and boundaries. Now everybody else behind him. And it just amplifi it's just amplification. It just amplify what he already can do. 
he can just probably throw the ball like this and still gonna go in there somehow due to his intent set and everyone else that believe in him so yeah it is necessary but when do you drop the ego or is you ever supposed to do you just supposed to activate it turn it on when you're in the field and then when you're resting you just out in public and you being courteous to people or charismatic or whatever do you turn it off then or like what's the right to go about this but if you want to be the best in something it is going to take that individuality because if it ain't individuality you fit in with all the other sheep you we you don't look different other than you look like everybody else and you just cloaked with them and it's going to take for you to stand out Did I do the outro? That's it for this video. Don't forget to like the video. If you like the video, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. DM me the link via X, formerly known as Twitter. I make sure my volume together. So I know to make. So you follow me on Twitch, Kick, and Rumble. Yeah, us versus them, man. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm out.